All right. Uh, today is Sunday, July 10th, 2022. And I'm recording this video because it's the easiest way of answering a simple question that actually requires a complex answer that was asked regarding Friday's, uh, July 8th, Friday's uh, trading day and a particular instance on the footprint chart that took place at uh, starting at 8.43 and 16 seconds. Uh, that would be prior to the, well, no, that's not prior to the open. Yeah, it is prior to the open. It's New York time. So 9.30 a.m. New York time is the open. So this was a, a pre-open thing here during our Globex. Anyway, the question asked was, how can there be all these zeros on one side of the bar? And what the hell are they doing there? You know, there's even a, some zeros on on this side here as well, this bar, all zeros on this bar. Um, how the hell is that possible? What does that mean? What What's broken? What's wrong? And anyway, that's, an, that's a question that I asked uh, a long time ago, and I had to research to get the proper answer. So I'm going to make you do some homework here, but then I'm going to reveal what's actually going on. So let us begin. All right. You, you see a series of down bars. Let's call them red bars, right? You see a series of down bars here. So therefore, what does that tell you about what's happening with price? Uh, you know, hopefully you can pretty much figure that out, right? Price is going down each time and, and price happens to be riding this range before it's going down, but price is going down each time a, a new bar prints. So, um, what does that tell you? Let, let's look at just for the fun of it. Let's look at this bar. We could be looking at any bar, but let's look at this bar. Okay. Um, can you figure out where price closed on this bar? Hopefully you should be able to do that by now. You should be able to figure out, well, gee, if I have a red bar, then price had to close, you know, at, at the bottom of the body of that bar. Here's the body of that bar, even though this is a footprint bar, it's got the outline of the of the candle, right? So this is the body of the candle and price must have closed down here. And then the next price, you know, either executed at the same level, the same tick level, or perhaps at a lower tick level, you know, or it could have even executed at, uh, at, at the next higher tick level, whatever. But the point here is that in each of these bars, you see the body of the bar at the bottom, right? That tells you, and I don't mean right as in direction right, I mean correct. You see the body of the bar at the bottom, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, so that tells you that in each instance, price closed at the bottom of the bar. Now, when we get here, we see that all of a sudden, uh, there were 605 contracts sold here, right? This is the, this is the, the, these are the sellers on this side. These are the buyers on this side. So 605 contracts sold here. Um, and there were zero contracts that there's a zero in there where you see this yellow thing, it's in the way, but there's a zero there. That's why the yellow thing printed. Zero contracts uh, bought at this horizontal level. I'm not talking about vertical, which everyone, you know, everyone looks at this stuff as verticals. Um, I'm talking diagonals, excuse me, not verticals, diagonals. So I'm talking about horizontally. Horizontally, we had 605 contracts sold, zero bought. Okay. Now, we know that this bar, this is where the bar closed, right? And what happened? What happened to the next bar? Where did the next bar open? Can we figure that out at least? Of course, that next bar opened, <laughs> you know, at the top of the bar body. Here's the bar body. And what do you see? Uh, 19 contracts sold, zero contracts bought. 28, 28, 46, 42, blah, blah, blah. And all the way down this bar with zero contracts bought. Uh, Let's look at another coincidence here, okay? 
here's another clue. You have zero contracts here. Where does the next zero occur? It occurs one tick below, right? One tick below this current bar. So we have we have consecutive zeros. If you were to put this bar on top of that bar, you would have consecutive zeros starting from up here, working their way down here. And now with that little trick you did, if you were to put this bar on top of that bar, you would have two more, well, you'd have this one at the same horizontal, right? And then you'd have two more consecutive zeros at the bottom. Okay, how is that possible? Under what circumstances can that happen? Well, if you think about the price ladder, what is the price ladder? What is the dome, right? The depth of market. Uh, the price ladder shows you basically limit orders that are sitting on the books waiting to execute when price reaches that level. Okay, so knowing that, uh, how what are the rules for how the dome works? You know, let, let's say that you are an active seller and you place a market order for something. How does it get filled on the dome? Doesn't matter if it's a buy or sell market order, but you place a market order. How does your market order get filled? You need to understand this stuff. You need to understand the mechanics of it well before you can understand what's happening here. Okay, you placed a market order. Your market order gets price matched on the price ladder and your market order will get filled according to the available quantity at that particular intersection point of bid and ask. So there's your market order. You know, if, if, you're, uh, if you're selling, if your market order is a sell order, you're going to get um, the next higher price. If your market order is a buy order, you're going to get the next lower price, the worst price. In each case, if you're an active buyer or seller, you're going to get the next worst price. Okay, knowing that, because you, you didn't place a limit order, so you're gonna be you're gonna be matched against whatever's available. All right, knowing that, take a look here. What's happening here is somebody placed a large market order for more than a thousand contracts. Um, we don't know exactly how many contracts because I, I'm not going to open, I'm not going to replay the session and look at the uh, time and sales tape and try to add everything up. But what I am going to do is uh, add these columns up, all of this stuff up here all of this stuff up and it comes out to 1,116. So I know that one order was placed for a large quantity, a good chunk of that 1,116, probably all of it, you know, at least uh, uh, 1,100 contracts for sure. So let's say that someone places a market order for 1,100 contracts right here, not a limit order, a market order. How does that market order get filled? Uh, we can see that, you know, at this pr these prior price levels here, you know, there were less than, less than 200 contracts available. And in some cases there were like 26, 25, 64 contracts available. There weren't those many contracts available. So how does an 1100 uh, order get filled here? Well, it's going to, eat as many contracts as are available here on the price ladder. And there were 605 contracts available on the price ladder at this tick position. What, what is that, 3880, I hope? Do I need to really look? It's, that's like, that's not the point, but it is 3880, okay. So 605 of them got filled from here. Uh, and then what, what happens if it's a market order other orders are not going to execute that are behind it until the market order is completed. The market order is not yet completed. It only filled 605 contracts and it's got to fill 1100 contracts. So where are those contracts delivered from? They're delivered from 
you know, you've exhausted that tick area on the dome. You've eaten up all the contracts available at that tick area. So guess what? Uh, you then start taking from the next lowest zone, which had 19 contracts. And the next zone that had 28, 28, 46, 42, 31, 31, 59, 41, 36, 32. Do I hear 37? Do I hear 50? Sold for 50. No, sorry, wrong thing. Uh, and we continued down. This continued down. You can see the effects here. It continued down and down until finally these 34 contracts fulfilled the order. That's why you have a bunch of zeros. A market order hit here. And in order to fully fill that market order, it took all, all of these uh, areas of the price ladder to fill it. And uh, you can, th these are, there's two kinds of sweeps. There's two kinds of sweeps of a price ladder. This is one, this sweep is generated by a large market order. So the price ladder ends up getting swept down in order to grab enough liquidity, as you're seeing here, to fill that order. Anyway, that's what's going on. And it's the same thing for the upside, okay? Um, you know, you can also spot like, uh, like here. Here, and you see this stuff, okay? Well, this was probably somewhere in here. You probably had an order that was bigger than 18. It was a buy order bigger than 18. So it swept this up and you could, it swept this uh, until you got here and things came back to normal. So that's what you're doing, seeing here. Now these, these are much easier to spot before, um, before, not even before the open, just during some kind of, you know, Globex sessions, especially before London is open and stuff like that. They appear a lot in, uh, in Globex before the London open because liquidity is so thin that sometimes, you know, even an order size of 10 ends up sweeping a couple of uh, ticks here. So anyway, I hope that gives you a better idea. Uh, that's all for now. Goodbye. Go away.